going to be talking about our review of Harry Potter and the uh, Deadly Hallows. Deadly Hallows. Deadly Hallows Part Two. And we actually may explain to you what the dead. What we actually went on in the Deadly Hallows. Deathly Hallows. Deathly Hallows. Okay. It, it's getting towards late in the afternoon, and I can't speak when it gets closer to seven. I have my hot coffee to wake me up. I was up. Let put it this way. Last night we went to see, we were at Harry Potter for like seven hours last night. So. Yeah, because we went to a special showing, so we saw part one in 2D, and then we saw part two in, in 3D. 3D. Yeah, and like we were explaining the fact that part two looked got a little dark. We yeah. Thought, we thought maybe first we were thinking, well maybe that's the way the movie was made, and all of a sudden it got bright. Well, you know, a lot of the Harry Potter, uh, they're, they're darker movies. I know. You know, but, a lot of them are set at night, there's not a lot of day shots. The, when the movies ended, I, in between uh, intermission, I, I turned around to the back of me and I'm looking up above and it thing got a lens on it like this, like that. So I might, like I said, but I, my guess is they kept the 3D lens on, they didn't want to change the lens. Well, yeah, see part of it is because we saw part two, part one and part two, we actually saw the first one and we're going, how many colors look washed up? Because it was not only that, it was the, also on the commercials. The commercials. The and then what, with a tip off with the fact, okay, see I need Harry Potter glasses. They say Harry Potter on the side. Special 3D edition. It says, you know, for all you people, Harry Potter. So, but no, um, I put my glasses on and all of a sudden the picture got better. Mm -hmm. So that would tend to make you me think. You did it on the, the part one when it was 2D? Yeah. I, I know. I, I, just, I, was watching, I was watching the movie. Because I, I, I actually, I've seen bits and pieces of every Harry Potter movie, but I've not seen the Harry Potter movies. Because I really thought they were, I, mean, I can tell you what I thought of them. Okay, you know, they're, but, you know, okay. I could not understand what those English kids were saying half the time. And my grandmother smiling. It's just like listening to my grandmother speak to me. You know, they're calling, they're calling, no, do that, tell them, you must do it this way. You know, that's the way it's going to be done. And, uh, and that's basically, some of the accents were so thick. Like, what in the world were these people saying? Mm -hmm. And other, I, all of a sudden, you hear, hey! And then, I didn't get it. Because I didn't understand. It's just like, um, you, were, you know, you take a whole bunch of marbles. Well, you're not used to hearing them. My grandmother's from Ireland. I grew up hearing the, uh, I grew up in my family is from England. So I did, but the, 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 basically what they were doing, the part seven and eight had to do all with, you know, with the, with. Part seven and eight, you mean the Deathly Hallows? Yeah, the Deathly Hallows one and two had to do, I think, more, it had to do more with the kids growing up and becoming adult action stars than it did continuing the, the way they were before. That's right, because if you've been following the Harry Potter series, for, if you look at the Deathly Hallows part one and two, there's, uh, you might notice some subtle difference compared to the other ones where, for example, the other ones were more at the school. Yeah. Right? <laughs> at the school. Well, it was at the school. What? What's, you know. This one, part of it was at the school, but there was a lot more. Yeah, they uh, were percentage out in the Percentage of the field. movie, there was a lot of them out in the field, out of yeah. them in the city, and it, than they were in other ones. And if you pay attention, I mean, I, least, I figured it this way. The central figure is actually Hermione. It's never been Harry Potter. She's the one they fall back on continually. Harry Potter is the. But they're all the, protecting uh, Harry. They're all protecting Harry, which is basically here's a, you know, by now you've seen the thing. But it's time, okay, can we? If you've read the book, you already know why they're protecting Harry. You already know. Okay, he gets killed in the end, but it's a sci-fi book. Which means what happens in sci-fi when you care about the lead character? He miraculously comes back alive. That's right. And then they can have another climax. Mm -hmm. They do kill him. Well, he just he does he does the old be here's a good one, folks. Are, I, are you supposed to be telling them that? They, they, if they've read the book, they know it. Oh, okay. So if it's you, not like it's, it's, it's not, not like, like it's a secret. secret. Plus the movie's okay. already been out. We were there. We saw it this morning. It's already out. Yeah, no, no, we but, saw no. the show that's supposed to start at 12. Now, here's one of the things I'll tell you is if you <coughs> ever, did, we were at a promotion for AMC, so if you ever have the occasion to do it, it's a pretty good deal because, first of all, it didn't cost you that much more, but also because when we arrived at the theater for the 9 o'clock showing, there were already people waiting in line outside for the 12 showing. 12 showing. She wanted to go back to the car 
to get something to eat. No, I, th I thought that was not a good idea because we would have lost our seats. Yeah. So, but, um, but um, I look at I, I look at the thing from from she looks at it because I mean she's like hey she's all wound up you know it wasn't just the fact that we had lost a soda from a drink last night but I, she looks at it from the from the you know the entertainment, entertainment side I look at it from more the technical. Pr pr production side technical side and what I saw was um, I saw bits and pieces of other people's movies in the thing mm -hmm. I saw Tolkien. You know, and uh, his the great like Lord of the Rings, a big group battle scenes. I also saw Star Wars in it, because remember how Luke was able to. Luke had uh, Obi Wan Kenobi had to die, so that Luke could move forward. Uh, in the in the book, it, it, you know, like I said, it's not a big deal. In the book, Harry has to die, so that things can move forward. And then what happens in the next movie after Obi Wan is dead? Obi Wan comes back to talk continually to. But like you said, that always happens in sci-fi movies. I know, but so that's you know, what it's how it works in sci-fi movies. But um, um, but you know. That's when you're going. He can't die. This is the movies. Yeah, you know, but they. I, I I have a tendency. Okay, here's my problem too. Because I, my mother was just my grandmother was a script supervisor, so I I tended to go into things, and my father was a second no, unit man, so I you know I, I thought that at times they lost track of what they were doing. Well, actually. As we were talking about, she she only saw seven. I saw nine different production companies involved in the visual effects. And what happens across the lines is um, everyone has their own individual fiefdom, and they do their own little thing they're required to do. And sometimes that's where you notice differences. And the, yeah. the challenge is to make it look seamless. Yeah. And, and part of the reason they do this many production companies is either they have different specialties, yeah. right? Or they also want to divide it up so nobody really knows what's okay, going on, even the, though it's yeah. done after a book. Yeah, it's done. It's uh, it, it, that's that's the asinine part of it. It's in a book. I know. It's in a book. You know what's going to happen. But they don't want to leak out. You don't. Okay, I take my glasses off. Okay, people. If you read the book, well, actually, if you read the book, you know what's going to happen. Well, so, the okay. part of it is, is the movies are never exactly like the books. Yeah, it, it basically they it, the book was like 800 pages long, so they actually trimmed the script to get a, a, what amounts to a five-hour movie. My guess is there's a probably seven. Uh, my guess it was eight. It basically, it works at one page per minute. So figure if the book was 800 pages long, there's 800 minutes of filming they did. Mm -hmm. You know how many hours that is? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of hours. So there's at least another hour plus of material that didn't make it to the screen. Hey, look for those re-releases in 3D. So, but um, this brings us to this a unique thing about the movie is these glasses, our Harry Potter glasses, because we all, everybody knows, you know, we have we have got awful amount of, you know, we've got 3D glasses of every type of. Marshawns. Marshawns. We have Marshawns, and we have Calvin, Klein. Calvin Klein's, and, and we have Gooner. Gooner. And but um, okay, these are one of the best set of 3D glasses that we've had. They're now, almost as good as the expensive ones. Yeah. And they are noticeably better than the typical ones that you get. And oh. actually, I was really kind of surprised. There, there's no comparison between. These, this is the typical one you get when you go to the real 3D. And they said, well, what are you doing with these glasses? Because we go to events and they give us the glasses. If you go to a... We've been there since the advent of 3D coming out in the theaters in the second round. We've got so many glasses from 3D events you would not believe. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't even take them. We don't even. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, you know, we don't, we, we don't have to... We'll take a glass if it's unique so that we can look at it on the screen. But, well, last night, we, you know, I've got three sets of glasses on my shirt, picking a set of glasses up at a time, watching the movies to see. There is, a, there is a perceivable difference between the Harry Potter glasses and the other real 3D, and I think it has to do with the, with the, the with design. The the, because these are supposed to be the glass resembling Harry Potter's glasses, but it did something. It did something for your eyes. Well, because look, it from top to bottom, but it, do, it does. There's just I that agree. little roundness. They think they actually... No, look at it. It's like, how did they get so scratched? Because those are spectacles is what they're called. Harry Potter wears these rounded type things, 
uh, most people uh, wear these if they wear glasses or you know uh, you know if you're going to see you know look at that there's the differences there is differences and the difference is it is seen on the screen so they think that the, without half trying these people came up with the perfect design for the 3D glasses without knowing what they did. But it does make a difference. Um, the, um, the 3D work, there's very little 2D work on that movie. Very little 2D work. On that. What do you mean by no, that? No, if you compare it to the other 3D movies we've been seeing this summer, remember how it's just walls of people with 2D? Mm -hmm. that there's, there is 2D. But there's virtually, it says almost, you know, 3D effects, 3D cameras, 3D this, 3D that. Oh, it's that's all, true. From the technical side, this is, my guess is as close to a true 3D, you're going to find a set. It was done back, it was done Okay, back Here, in. here's my question, because we saw, what, were, were part one and part two filmed at the same time? Yep. Okay, and so part of this, they're filmed at the same time, but part one came out in 2D. Yeah, then part, but part one came out in 2D. But I did look at the effects at the time. And you looked at all well, the effects. Well, she was she actually she had to go to the to the little Wheaton's room, yeah, you know, <laughs> because you have to get there before the crowds get. And uh, I'm looking at the things, and it's basically uh, mirroring the titles. They weren't as long, but it said 3D. It said 3D effects by, which means it was it basically it was shot for 3D also. But um, they, okay, I'll give you a tip. Um, because this is a 3D cam, this is a true 3D camera here. See, uh, you know, if I step back here, I'm in focus. If I move all the way up here, look, I'm in focus and the cross is in focus. Uh -huh. But the way it works, with the, when you back in the process and you use a zoom lens, all of a sudden, you know, if I'm back here, all of a sudden I start to vanish. Mm -hmm. And she's in focus, I'm not in focus. And then all of a sudden I get in focus, she gets in focus. A true 3D system doesn't have zoom lens. So basically if you see something being zoomed, it's probably not a true 3D camera. A true 3D camera has to do with depth and field. If this camera was to shoot 100 foot away, that 100 foot would be very cut off small, but it would still be in focus. And the size of the picture that you can photograph in 3D, it depends upon the size of your lens. If you have, a, for instance, you have a 75 millimeter lens on your camera, you're going to get a bigger picture, folks. Mm -hmm. If that's if you got a, a 200 millimeter lens on that camera, you're going to get a really big picture. So um, that's how I can tell that when it when it's back ended versus not because they didn't name the camera company. They didn't name the, they didn't name the 3D digitalizing companies, but no cameras. If it's a Sony, they'll name the Sony. If it's a Panasonic, they'll name it Panasonic. There was no camera company's name, so that's you know, I, so I, I talk about the technical side too much, but I thought I did see some camera companies at the end. Uh, oh, I did say SDDS Digital. Yeah. Okay. Uh -uh. Yeah, but that's right. That's the digital. If you look at the thing, but they didn't. There's only so many companies that actually produce cameras for 3D. We actually have we have three of them in our possession. So, um, but, you know, I, mean, she, you know she, I can get off my side and she can go back to her side. And well, see, part of it is, it, okay, the, the advertisement for this says it all ends. People are like, oh my gosh, Harry Potter ends. Okay, that is, I will tell you, almost deceptive. Don't leave when the thing goes black. Don't get up from your chair and leave because what would you miss if you leave? Those few little words. That say, 19 years later... Then you have an anti-climax to the previous anti-climaxes. Mm -hmm. And so 19 years later, you see Harry Potter, Ron, and Hermione, all with, oh, and Jenny, yeah. um, with their kids that are, look like they're about nine years old. Eight, nine eight, years, nine years, old. years old. Yeah. And this is 19 years later. So there's like a good 10 to 11 years of gap space. Yeah. What happened during that time? Well, you know what happened during that nine years? They know definitely because there's more than one kid in the family, so something happened with all three, you know, uh, with you know, with the two families. Actually, uh, what is it? The little blonde-haired creep is also there. Oh, Mac uh, McElroy. Yeah, McElroy. <laughs> He's there, 
You know, he's got his kid and he's smiling when he's Oh playing. yeah, he's there too. Okay. He does play a good, bad character. Yeah, I, you know, okay. I mean, here's my, my, my take on the three kids. Because I was a kid actor. I started out, you know, as a child actor, too, most people do know. Uh, you know, I got 1940s. 1940s is bad. You know, but um, I started out as a child actor when their what? grandparents were, <laughs> were my age. That's not good, is it? But uh, uh, no, but uh, if you're carrying, if you're showing uh, the, the, you're showing the kids, you're showing the kids for a definite reason, because there's no other reason other than to build uh, for the future, because it gives you two sets of things. Well, yeah, because otherwise it's not going to say 19 years later. Yeah, 19 years it, later. It gives you that filling gap between what happened before. And they kept. The bad guy, one of the bad guys. Okay, here's the trick: is you know the little the little rodent is going to be a little rodent for night and long enough that he becomes a good guy enough that they'll forgive him for what he did. So, isn't that something? <laughs> well, I.